Welcome to our training on what educators need to know about FERPA. My name is Elijah Armstrong and I am a policy fellow for the Youth and Education team at the Future of Privacy Forum. The objectives of this module are first to understand how the Federal Student Privacy Law FERPA applies to educators and second to understand educators role in upholding FERPA. For a starting activity I'd like you to take a second to think about the kinds of data you collect from students, how you store it, and how you share it. Student data is often broader than people think at first glance. Grades are student data, but so are attendance records and even student names. Do you keep student logins for things like grade portals? This isn't meant to be a judgment. Collecting student data isn't a bad thing. In fact, it's often necessary to create the best educational outcomes possible. We just want to take a moment to see the broad range of information that's considered student data. The Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, or FERPA, is crucial for educators to understand and follow. This is because FERPA is a federal law that dictates how schools and districts must handle student data. If FERPA is violated, schools and districts can face punitive actions like investigations, fines, or loss of federal funding. Following FERPA is also important because FERPA serves to protect student data. Students and parents trust their schools to keep them safe and have their best interests in mind. When FERPA is violated, it not only harms students and their parents, but also hurts their trust in the school, which is important to maintain and hard to repair. FERPA was designed to protect student data in two main ways, access and privacy. Access means students and parents have a right to access their own education records, and privacy prevents the unauthorized sharing of education records. Education records are students' personally identifiable information, also known as PII, that are kept by the school. Under the old law, most things were offline, so the education records were physical files and folders. As technology has become more integrated into our school system, physical files aren't the only things we need to worry about protecting anymore. A lot of education records are stored online, and they all must be protected. Some good rules of thumb are not sharing student information and keeping up with good cybersecurity practices, like locking your computer when walking away from it. For the rest of this module, I'm going to be using the term student information, but if you need more specific definitions, I'd suggest going to your school or district attorney. Education records are students' personally identifiable information that are kept by the school. In other words, data points that could be used to identify a specific student. These include names, grade levels, course rosters, student ID numbers, home addresses, race and ethnicity information, and home telephone numbers. FERPA guarantees parents and students access to their own educational records. Over the next couple of slides, we're going to look at what that specifically means. FERPA gives parents the right to access their child's education records and to request corrections to inaccurate information found within those records. Once a student turns 18 or enters college, they then gain the right to access their own information and ask for corrections instead of their parents needing to do it on their behalf. It's important to know what you can share with an informal FERPA request, such as a parent asking, what's my child's grade in math, compared to what you can share with a formal FERPA request. The difference in how to handle an informal FERPA request versus how to handle a formal FERPA request is often dictated by district policy. Some schools have policies where they treat everything like a formal FERPA request, so make sure you find and follow your specific district policy. FERPA requests need to be made for specific data, so a parent can't just request every file that's ever been created. FERPA requests also don't require you to create new data. If the file being requested doesn't already exist, you don't have to give it over. It's also important to note that both parents have the right to request access to student records even in the event of a divorce. 
A court order is the only thing that can stop a parent from having the right to request data from the school. It can't just be a verbal request from the other parent. There is a lot of nuance to FERPA requests, but learning the proper ways to handle a FERPA request is vital to protecting student privacy. FERPA is also designed to prevent unauthorized sharing of student records. It's very important to recognize FERPA sets out clear rules for when you can and when you can't share educational records. Schools may only share information from a student's education record in certain situations, which is why it's very important to know your school's policies. In order to share student records, a school must either get parental permission or adhere to the requirements of one of the FERPA exceptions. Data can't just be shared. Schools have different policies on how to get consent. The consent from a parent must be verifiable, so an online form like a Google form wouldn't work because it doesn't verify the parent's identity. The parental consent can be virtual, but ultimately must be written in some form. To comply with FERPA, consent forms must include what data is being shared, who it is being shared with, and the reason the data is being shared. The information on the forms must be specific and can't be a blanket catch-all consent form. Parental consent and advanced knowledge is always great to have in school settings. FERPA also has a number of exceptions where school staff can share student data without parental consent. FERPA is also designed to prevent unauthorized sharing of student records. This list of rules and exceptions to FERPA is a really great starting point, but is by no means exhaustive. State and local officials have also passed privacy laws, and schools and districts have their own privacy policies as well. Make sure to check with your school and district so that you're knowledgeable on the local rules and regulations that apply to your classroom. We're going to go a bit more in-depth on some of the FERPA exceptions now, starting with the Health and Safety Emergency Exception. The Health and Safety Emergency Exception allows schools to share information with appropriate officials. A good example of this would be a teacher telling paramedics that a student is having an allergic reaction when the student goes into anaphylaxis. Because of the nature of the situation, the teacher would be covered under the FERPA Health and Safety Emergency Exception, as the paramedic is an appropriate official and the situation is an emergency. If you aren't sure if a situation would qualify as an emergency, or if the person you're talking to would count as an appropriate official, contact your principal or district. Next is the directory information exception. Directory information is information like date of birth, name, and telephone number that aren't considered harmful or an invasion of privacy if disclosed. Educators are allowed to disclose directory information at will so long as the school has told parents what information they consider to be directory information as the definition of directory information changes from school to school. It is also very important to note that parents have the right to opt out of having their directory information disclosed. It's important to know what information your school has designated as directory information and also important to know what parents have opted out. Having directory information disclosed can pose a very serious threat to students, particularly younger students, who could be put at risk by ill-meeting adults who would use that information to harm them. For example, a parent who has been issued a court order to not contact the child. Educators should also know school policy on using both photos and videos on personal social media and the school website. Lastly, we should note that even if an app only requires information that is considered directory information, you can't just use that information to sign a student up for the app you must still get written parental consent for students to use the app. Lastly, we'll go over the school official exception. The school official exception allows for schools to share data with internal staff or external vendors like edtech companies without parental consent as long as the data is being used for legitimate educational interest. It's much easier to check with your administration to see if there is a list of pre-approved products you can already use because the district has pre-screened them and gained parental consent for them. If you have new tech you seek to use, 
You should ask your administration about the approval process, as it is very unlikely anyone other than the principal or another district official would be able to gain approval for the app. We should also point out cost isn't the barrier to technology use in this case. Even free apps need to be approved by the district and have parental consent. There are other exceptions to FERPA which may be relevant depending on the type of school you work in. For example, there are exceptions for sharing student information with accrediting boards, with governmental entities conducting audits, with certain parties involved in financial aid, and for subpoena purposes, just to name a few. However, make sure you get clarification from your school district in the event you are confused whether or not you can share information. To summarize, Educators need to understand that parents have the right to access their students' data and ask for any errors to be corrected. FERPA is a federal law that exists to protect student information and data. As an educator, make sure you know your school's data policies. To be more specific, make sure you know what information is designated as directory information and who has the authority to approve technology and the sharing of student data. These rules can be confusing, so if you are in doubt, make sure to ask for clarification before acting. Protecting educational records is vital for the safety and trust of both parents and students. Thank you for joining this training.